What has captured most people's imagination with wearable technology is the fact that it allows us to sort of surpass a lot of the weaknesses in our human body, in our own skin. Wearable can help in the future, I think, to uh, uh, compensate some of the limits of the uh, individuals. I think as technologies become more radical, we can be superhumans in certain fields. Technology can allow us to extend many senses that we are not extending. People have lost limbs, people have lost their senses. Technology, when it's reintroduced to the human body, can kind of give people back those experiences. My parents, my older brother and his wife, were on vacation in the Panhandle in Florida. We were out in the ocean fishing one day. All of a sudden, something grabs me on my right leg, takes me underwater, and the rest was pretty much just like the movie Jaws. They had to amputate my leg about five inches above the knee. The Vanderbilt powered prosthesis, which has a motor in the knee and a motor in the ankle, acts as basically a quadricep muscle and a calf muscle. And so walking up a slope, instead of me just having to drag weight on my limb, the knee and ankle is providing a push off that propels me up this slope. It knows physically how the person's interacting with it. Measuring that information 500 times a second all the time, it figures out really quickly based on a change in patterns in that information, change in how you're slinging it around, and it can replicate any function provided by the healthy limb. We have to very consciously develop controllers that ensure that the leg will move in a coordinated way and will do what the person wants it to do, what the person intends it to do. We can help people walk faster. We can help people walk more safely. I think we will eventually become a cyborg in a conceptual way. You know, when you get biology and technology together, you can really start mending stuff that was not possible before. I was born completely colorblind. I was always interested in perceiving color. My name is Neil Harbison, and I feel that I'm a cyborg. In 2004, I started a project with the intention of extending my senses and create something that would allow me to perceive color. The result was a camera that detected the light frequency of the color in front of me that allowed me to hear color. Each color, like red and orange, has a different light frequency. So this frequency corresponds to a specific sound, and this is the sound that I hear. So this is, for example, this is an F-sharp bottle. It sounds orange. So at the beginning, my aim was to perceive as many colors as other humans. But when I was able to perceive 360 different microtones for 360 different colors, uh, I realized that I was able to perceive color better than my friends. It's changed the way I perceive everything, because uh, everything that I look sounds, because there's color almost everywhere. And also the way I perceive art has changed, because now painters have become composers. I no longer feel that this is a wearable device. I feel that this is a body part. The union between technology and human can actually enhance humans in a way that we've never been thinking about. You could choose the augmentations to your body. You know, maybe you want to be super strong. Maybe someone else wants to fly. You can use technology to enhance the thing you want to enhance when you want to enhance it. IDOS consists of two masks. So the first one is IDOS Vision and that is, um, affects the way that we see motion. So it enhances our perception of motion. So it creates this effect where you can see um, the motion history and traces and patterns that are normally hidden to the naked eye. And then our second device targets our hearing. And what it does is that enhances the way that we hear speech. It screens out all the background noise and uses a directional microphone to only pick out what I want. Can you hear me now? Yes? Good. I think we, we set technology as something to run towards, but the problem is that technology does limit our imaginations. Our perspective has always been to look at it from a kind of more provocative narrative way to try and use the story and then see what technologies you can hack up and put together to achieve that vision. I'm going to have to have some serious conversations about when will people elect to include computing inside our bodies. We should always be looking at wearables in concert as they work together on our bodies. And overall, are they helping us be better human beings? There are different sort of levels of where the technology and how physically, what barriers it will cross to become much more and more intimate. 
What's exciting about kind of reconfiguring the human body with technology is that kind of anything goes. The intention is to continue extending color perception. It's still in evolution, there's no end. Once you can get to the point to have the prosthetic leg acting in real time along with the user, that would be, I guess, the perfect setup. And I think that's just on the horizon. We are trying to sort of supplement the weaknesses that we have, but that's, that's a very normal human thing. We've always been trying to improve ourselves. It's part of the human condition.